buffing wheels are next. Um, I'm not going to try to design them the way that um, they're just a placeholder. I'm not going to try to design them the way they're actually constructed just because um, where did... they're complicated, first of all. And um, it would just take me a long time to go through and make this buffing wheel and... Uh, I don't know that I'm gaining anything necessarily. I will do the, I'll try to do the thicknesses and guess at that, which I'm going to have to actually get some data from them or order a set and then uh, find out what they're actually, how they're made. Um, let's see what they got under buy now. Cloth. Bias color buffing wheel. <clears throat> okay, so actually, that's some decent prices. Let's see outside diameter 18 inches, centering 7, arbor hole 125. So the funny thing is, I don't have. I don't have. Um, I've got a one inch arbor, so I should probably have a couple of centering rings made. Uh, let me think about this. Yeah, I'm going to have to figure that one out. Um, Seventeen, eighteen. So this is the one here that I'd probably order. Outside diameter eighteen, centering seven. Just guessing. <clears throat> There's also a number of formulas for feed rates and and. Uh, RPM and there's just there's way more than I thought there was um, <clears throat> so I'm gonna have to kind of digest some of that stuff too and I won't drag you guys through that because there's it's there's quite a number of formulas that are on this website but um, so I think I'll go ahead and model this one at 18 Let's see centering room seven is there any way to So it looks like that's a single piece of metal. Sorry guys, I'm just... <clears throat> So I know based on where they want you to grab the buffing wheel about what this should look like. So let's try it here. We, we'll, we'll make it pretty a little bit later. Um, Okay, <clears throat> not gonna be able to do a single line. Let's see, we're gonna go like this. And no. If anybody knows a way to get out of that command when that happens, 
please let me know in the comments where once you go over the end of a line it starts trying to generate arcs. If there's a way to retain the uh, line command but not have it do that, let me know because that drives me nuts. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to mirror this around the center line. Is it one piece? Yeah. Huh. I didn't know I put a <clears throat> point in the middle there. <coughs> so let's see. It said Arbor was 1.25. Um, and it said that the flange was seven, so it's seven like here. Oops. And did it say what size, what width it was? Let's see. Cloth layers, buff density. It doesn't say how wide it is, so am I, can I guess? No, because it doesn't show it in on. I'm, I'm going to say it's under an inch, just guessing. Pure guess on my part. Because to get a thicker one, you have to stack these. So we'll go like... Um, we'll go like three quarters of an inch and um, we're gonna make this thickness here like um, gosh I don't know in the metal it's gonna be something like um, I'm sure it'll be thicker than this but I'm gonna go 0 0.05 just for right now Uh, where's my equals? Equals that. And then this one equals And why do we not like the revolve? What's wrong with it? Ah. Uh, so here's a problem with SolidWorks. This right here drives me batshit crazy. Why is it that once I create a thin feature, um, and this would be a question for SolidWorks if you happen to pop onto my video, why is it that it's not just a revolve? A revolve is a revolve is a revolve. Why is it that that's grayed out and I cannot deselect it now that I've that I've generated another part with a thin feature? <clears throat> you guys need to write that out of the program. It's total bull crap. So what it means is I have to probably destroy this revolve and uh, regenerate it. Yeah, just do it. Sketch is open or self intersecting. Oh, that's because it picked the wrong line. Uh, yeah, that's good for now. I, for, I missed something, guys. <coughs> Excuse me. I would guess this height here is something in the order of one inch. Enough, enough wall to main to retain the the um, cloth. 
So this is where I wish they had a radiate command. I, 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 what I'm kind of thinking is is that um, it would generate, maybe it would look something like I would generate a squiggly line and then I would wrap it on a circular surface and then I would radiate, which I could do with a uh, surface, but there's no reason I shouldn't be able to do it with a solid too. And, and I would radiate um, at least to give a visual representation, I would radiate that wrinkled closed loop out into space. <clears throat> the other thing I could think of is, um, oh, I could think of for cloth wrinkle commands and, and you know, more developed flex um, command, but... <clears throat> Excuse me, I've really got some kind of like a cold this morning going on. But yeah, there's a number of things. I had a project a while back where I needed to generate a machined path on a part as the cutter went by the part and the part was rotating. So if you had a fourth axis on a mill and your part was being driven at a certain RPM and you wanted to generate a cut through that part as it was rotating and you had a path um, and I was able to generate a number of 3D lines using um, some advanced features um, with motion but it I, I couldn't actually do what I wanted to do because when you have a machine tool, it's you're you're running one solid, you're passing one solid through the other while it's moving, and so it was fairly complicated. But it was it had something to do with a um, uh, roots type compressor. And anyways, the issue is is I couldn't do it, and so there's some kinematics that they should add to SolidWorks and and some advanced. Um, cutting commands and, and that sort of thing and I wish they were focused more on that and less on trying to re-up my subscription but anyways I don't mean to rant you guys so we'll move forward here sorry uh, let's see so we're gonna generate like the old school buff just a block because I want to get this going here this morning, so... Uh, oh, I saw it. There's the silhouette edge. Let's see. Turn my axis back on. SolidWorks should automatically interpret this to be a diameter. I don't know why it's not doing that. Something's something's askew. Let's see. What did they say? I think they said 18 inch diameter or 17. One of the two. 18 inch OD. Okay. So we'll jump back into SolidWorks. Oops. Divided by two. Since we're the radius, divided by two. Um, what? There's another one. So it divided just the inches by two. <laughs> Solid works, bastards. All right. Um, and. Obviously, I don't want it to merge, so um, as soon as this stupid thing gets done, I'm going to roll this back and, and throw a weldment feature in the top. That should fix that, I hope. Come on. Oh, I thought we were waiting on me. We're going to make 
this um, what sort of material don't what can do they have cloth let's see non metals do I have anything in my materials sustainability extras packaging materials corrugated Well, I thought I had more materials up. Oh. Yeah, I thought I had more materials in this. All right, we're going to go with corrugated paper for now. And then we're going to turn it white. Got some beige cotton there. Um, <clears throat> so this is going to be a buffing wheel. 18 inch. Um, what was the flange size? Seven. One point two five arbor. Okay. Eighteen inch OD. Seven inch flange. One point two five arbor. guys it's a long title and we're coming up on 30 minutes here I'm probably gonna have to divide this video into three pieces so let's see um, so we'll stop here and uh, we'll regroup um, and we'll start doing a little bit of assembly uh, I still haven't decided on the frame. I think I'm going to go with some one by one tubing or some inch and a half by inch and a half tubing. It's real common at the steel place. Um, and they've got a bunch of different fairly light walls. I don't want it to be real heavy. And then I've got to figure out one of the things that I keep thinking about is I want the pulley tension to be some sort of ratchet system where the motor is on a hinge and then there's just a light force applied to tension the wheel and it could be almost like a snowboard um, strap or I just haven't quite figured it out because I want it to be quick release I think a snowboard strap would actually work awesome uh, and then it's quick release you know when you want to change the wheel you just pop it off flip the motor forward and you're ready to work you know change the belt speed <clears throat> so we'll go ahead and end it here guys and we'll pick it back up um, on the next one talk to you guys later bye